kind of the biggest f factors we tend tend to see are the most consistent would be improve NDF digestibility. And if there's more fiber digestibility, that brings along a little more microbial protein, whether it's the microbial protein or uh, probably increased VFA production, acetate production to for milk fat synthesis in the mammary gland. And so you tend to see more uh, an improvement in feed efficiency, either a little bit more milk or a little less intake or both. Uh, or perhaps, you know, sometimes a little more intake as well, depending on stage of lactation. Hi, I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is an old friend and old colleague, Dr. Jeff Perkins, that we've known each other since uh, we met at OSU some 35 years ago. He's a distinguished professor of animal science at OSU. He's worked there for, like I said, 35 years. And his main research area is rumen microbiology and with a big emphasis on microbial protein synthesis and how all this relates to dairy nutrition. So, so Jeff, good to see you again and welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Bill. Um, you wrote a paper, and I'm not sure which journal this is going in, so you might tell us, but a review paper on isoacids. Uh, we had a talk previous on this, so we don't need a lot of detail on what these are, but remind the, the listeners what they are and, and kind of what this review covers. Okay, thanks. Uh, so it will be in Applied Animal Science um, in about a month or so, um, and then however long after that. I basically have covered sort of the background, the history related to how IsoPlus came into being and then there was a big lag time and then we started you know into the more current things not just us but several others are working in this area now i've tried to summarize what everyone has been doing not just me kind of the biggest f factors we tend tend to see are the most consistent would be improve ndf digestibility and if there's more fiber digestibility that brings along a little more microbial protein whether it's the microbial protein or uh, probably increased VFA production, acetate production to for milk fat synthesis in the mammary gland. And so you tend to see more uh, an improvement in feed efficiency, either a little bit more milk or a little less intake or both, uh, or perhaps, you know, sometimes a little more intake as well, depending on stage of lactation. So uh, the most consistent would be fiber digestibility and feed efficiency. And you mentioned stage of lactation. How, how does that affect responses to these, both in production and maybe digestibility as well? Uh, so we, we think that in kind of in the peak or after peak time, when intake is at a bigger premium, probably there's a little bit of a lessening of room and fill if you improve fiber digestibility. So cows that have the demand to, to make more milk will eat a little bit more. And later lactation, when you know, when it's it's really not intake that's regulating amount of milk, probably they'll improve fiber digestibility and maybe drop intake just a little bit, but improve feed efficiency, sort of like menensin. The more interesting uh, work that's been coming out recently is in the transition period. So there is some potential from uh, Jackie Borman's group at Purdue that there could be some benefits in early lactation, uh, in, in particular to help help relate how how energy is used, how you might be alleviating some of the uh, muscle protein turnover. And so kind of helping the cow to get off to a little bit better start in early lactation. It could also be that they start feeding the, the iso acids maybe in the dry period. So you're already adjusting the bacteria to it before, you know, a, before a calf is born. And, and so it could be kind of uh, helping out there, maybe not just in the early lactation, but also starting in the dry period. So what, what, I don't know how much we know about mode of action, but it, if we don't know the exact one, what are some postulated modes of action? Well, the, the fiber digestibility clearly is that the cellulitics require branch chain VFA or iso acids. And they also are important hemicellulytics, even though surprisingly, they don't really use much of the sugars resulting from hemicellulose, but they help to kind of jumpstart the, or you know, prioritize the, 
the degradation of carbohydrate and it helps to make a more efficient mi entire microbial population. So we know that there probably also is a post-absorptive response. Some of our work, we showed that uh, if uh, there is always going to be some absorption of VFA, in including the branch VFA, probably uh, from the rumen or uh, depending on the VF branch VFA, maybe uh, downstream after the rumen. But there is some absorption of these. We think that you need to supplement them to increase the concentration in the rumen and then entry into microbes is basically concentration dependent. So, so you're not like just feeding them and then getting them all to be turned into microbial cells. But the more you feed, the more you get into microbial cells. And what that means then is you'll get, a, you'll get some absorption and probably they do have a response. It could be that they are helping to shift um, partitioning of energy toward the mammary gland and especially in multiparous cows. And then what seems to be happening is there aren't, aren't nearly as many studies with first lactation animals, but it could be that you, you don't see much of a response with them, but they are generating more body, uh, body weight gain in that period. So they're still using, uh, they're still benefiting from it, but the, the benefit in milk fat is probably more with multiparous cows. Is, is, is this, do, do rumen bacteria adapt to, adopt to these things or, or, you know, like some, some of these additives that their, the effects diminish over time? So it's, I think it's kind of concentration dependent and it kind of depends back where the, all the bacteria are, you know, there, when you think about it, new feed is, is consumed and bacteria have to colonize it, start breaking it down. They rely on some other uh, microbes to break down protein for them. The, the cellulitics can't really break down protein on their own. They need to get ammonia and they need to get the iso acids that they require. And so probably down at that local level, it's you, you're you're relying on enough RDP, maybe not right there where the cellul cellulose is. So again, it's kind of a concentration flux to where they need it, when they need it. And what I think is happening is it's it's really helping them to in the early phases of colonization, instead of waiting for these products to get to them, it's you know, it's it's more likely the concentration dependency is pushing it down inside where the where the bacteria are invading the new particles and breaking it down, the the, the iso acids are coming with them, and and helping uh, in that process. So they they I don't think there's really an adaptation because the cellulitics require them. They can't make any of them on their own. They can't make branch chain amino acids. They lack an enzyme to do that, and they can't get the iso acids from the branch chain amino acids and the dietary protein. So they totally rely on them. And if they become short, whether that's because pro RDP is room integrated protein is low, or there's competition with other microbes for the branch VFA, then they, then they're not as able to get off to such a good start. And you don't get this well-developed consortium of bacteria that really is breaking down the new feed as quickly as possible while the feed is in the rumen. So that's kind of the efficiency response that I think is happening in the rumen. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smartamine M, the best in-class rumen protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to milkpay.com. I guess just to, to wrap up, what, what uh, research are you continuing in this area or are you doing more in this area? Well, we've, we've just shown that, uh, brand, that iso acids work better when you have enough RDP in the diet. If, if you have too much, then you don't really need them. If you don't have enough, then they don't work as well. They, what's probably happening is that the branch VFA help the bacteria to use all of the amino acids in the RDP fraction, helping a more efficient uh, growth and colonization and so on. So we're looking at that, trying to relate to how, how it affects uh, 
protein breakdown, we, we think there's the potential that, that the branch VFA themselves act as signaling molecules inside bacteria. They right away are turned into branch chain amino acids in a concentration dependent way. And the branch amino acids are telling the cells uh, adequacy of protein or not. And so, uh, so we think that there might be some regulation of the peptidases that are, that are in, in bacteria that have peptidases. And so it could be that RDP isn't really a constant in the diet, but kind of depends on, on the dietary situation. So anyway, we're looking very intently at, at how the branch VFA interact with the ability uh, uh, for all of the microbes to to provide a, a more efficient consortium of, of the all the, of, well of all the microbes in the room. Well, thanks a lot. As, as usual, I always learn something from you. It's been nice talking to you. <laughs> thanks. You nice talking to you too. And it's been nice. We've known each other for all these years back when neither of us had gray hair <laughs> and, and, and air.